Praise the Lord for the glory that belongs to him. Worship the Lord because of his beauty and holiness.
in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are here as your point of contact for the kingdom of God. And I am Reverend Cynthia M. Maddox, and we are coming to you from First Baptist Church, located at 101 South Wilmington Street in the city of Raleigh, North Carolina, where our interim pastor is the Reverend David A. Dalby. Our mission here is to experience the power, the unity, and the wholeness of God's reign in our lives and in our community as the message, as the message, as the meaning, and let's not forget the mission hmm, of Jesus Christ as he transforms us. Therefore, we serve as a point of contact but the kingdom of God in local and national and also global outreach. Our theme for the year 2023 is God is doing a new thing in our midst. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Isaiah 43, 16, 18 through 19. Therefore, we make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. Our Lord, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Ephesians 4, 3 through 6. Now. Let us worship in the Lord, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us worship the Lord together. Please stand. Let us pray. Merciful, gracious, eternal God, Lord, we come right now simply to say thank you. We say thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning, clothed and in our right mind. Thank you, Lord, for putting it on our hearts, Lord, to come into your presence, into your worship, Lord, into this sanctuary. Lord, we are grateful to you for all that you've done. Lord, we come uh, in, in a, a world uh, that is full of trouble. Lord, we come in a week that has seen mass shootings. We've come in a week that has seen uh, the recovery efforts from earthquakes, Lord. But, Lord, we put all of those concerns aside because we come in this moment, Lord, not to ask you for anything, Lord, other than your presence. Not to ask you for anything, Lord, but simply, Lord, to come into your presence to lift your name high, to lift you up to a world who so desperately needs you, we come, Lord, to worship you. We come, Lord, to sing praises to your name. We come, Lord, 
because you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy, Lord, of our worship. And Lord, so we thank you, Lord, for putting it on our hearts to lift you up because you said if you be lifted up, you will draw all people unto you, Lord. So we come, Lord, simply to lift you up, to lift up our hearts to you, our minds to you, our thoughts to you, Lord, and praise, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your presence here this morning. We ask you, Lord, that you would have your way in this worship service today, that you would fill your, the man of God who will bring forth your word with your spirit, that you would prepare our hearts, Lord, to hear a word from you, and that that word, Lord, will take fruit, uh, will, will take seed, root in our souls and bear much fruit to your glory. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, simply to say, Hallelujah, Father. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. Amen. church. <laughs> Amen. Blessed be the Lord, for he has blessed us to be here this morning. Amen. When many did not hear the clarion call of morning, but we are here clothing our right minds with a reasonable portion of health and strength, and we thank God for his goodness. Praise be the Lord. 
for all he has done for us. Uh, this morning, I, for those of you who have not heard, let us be in prayer for the family of Eugene Dunn, Jr. and his sisters and brothers, etc. I had a call from him earlier this morning that his sister Denise had passed. And Denise was here last Sunday. I was shaking her hand and chatting with her. But time is filled with swift transition. Uh, we never know when our expiration date is, but God is good. And he's made a way in the middle of every event in life because we are called for eternal life. And so we just pray for them, and he's asking for prayer. He's rather shaken and is understandable because he was her caretaker. And he was almost like her daddy. <laughs> and he felt like she was like his child, and he did so much for her. And so let us be in support, not only of him, but for the rest of the family. Do we have any visitors this morning? Oh, praise the Lord. All righty. Oh, amen. I'm going to start with the lady in the back. If you just tell us your name, you pull your mask down, and hopefully I hear you. Then those, those in the middle of the hearing of the what you see? Lisa Scott. Scott. Dr. Lisa Scott. Gotcha. Thank you so much. God bless you. The handsome young man in the back. My brother, Terrell Dolby. Terrell Dolby. Amen. That's why I say he's a handsome young man. <laughs> oh, we praise God for your presence. I praise God for all of you. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, the psalmist declared, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. I want to lift up the offering because it's always a good thing and a command of God to give. But God says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, shall men give unto your bosom. But the question was raised in the book of Malachi, will a man rob God? Now they were giving him blind, crippled animals. And they asked that silly question. And he said, you've robbed me already. How, Lord, in tithes and offerings, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my kingdom and I'm going to do something for you. I'm going to open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing so great you won't have room enough to receive it. But not only that, what's even more important, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. You see, we have an enemy. You know, and, and sometimes we get the ring in our hands that says, just it's something all the time. If it's not the refrigerator, it's the stove. It's the car. My, my, my. Something all the time. Well, God said, I will rebuke the devourer. He didn't say you wouldn't have trouble, but he said, I'm there in the midst. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll provide for you. But give so that you will have something in your account for him to give back. And he multiplies it. Amen. So right now, most of you probably have given online, and we have the boxes in the front and the back, but let's bless the offering. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to give unto your glory. We know we own nothing, that we are stewards. And so we ask, Father God, that you bless this that we have offered unto you. May it not be equated to blind and crippled animals, but that we have given you our best. We thank you. We ask, Father, that you touch it and multiply it back 
according to our needs. Even if there's dust in our pockets, God, we know you still provide. You make a way out of no way, and we give you praise. You bless us in so many different ways we can't even count it, and sometimes unaware of it. But we thank you for being faithful. Bless your holy name. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. We ask that you read your, let me see the hands of those of you who get the newsletter on the computer. Oh, quite a few of you. God bless you. We've got folks who are tech savvy. <laughs> Amen. Since I know you're getting it now, I'm looking for you at Bible study. <laughs> I set you up, didn't I? <laughs> It's important. Sunday school, Bible study, any opportunity you have to learn of him, you should do that. Because we live in a world that is filled with so much trouble. But we are hiding in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Now, I think I've covered everything. I don't have my notes, so deacons, have I missed anything? All right, we're good to go. Huh? God bless you. Come on down.
joy and the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery and strife. He promised to keep me, never to leave me. He'll never ever come short of his word. I've got to fast and pray, say in the narrow way. I want to go with him when he comes. song was written by a young man named Robert Fryson, who grew up in Raleigh, went to Ligon High School, he was a few years behind me, and I remember him, and he told me one day that he had planned to sing opera. And he went to school, and he got his master's and all, and he was doing his opera thing and said, and God touched him and said, now, you've done what you want to do, now it's time to do what I want you to do. You see, we never know what God has in store for us. And he had a group called Voices Supreme. One of the best male groups I've ever heard. There's about four of them. And we were as a church a part of bringing them here, not to the church, but we had it at Lincoln. We had formed a group of five churches. We had a great choir. And we did a concert, and we had them as the second half. We featured them, and it was a marvelous thing. Bobby, you were there. Amen. We, it was a marvelous thing. But that young man's life touched so many, and he's gone on to be with the Lord. But his music is still going on. And that's the way it is in our lives because even after we are gone, the song we sing lives on in the hearts of men and women. You never know who you will touch and how you will influence people. And that's why we must give our very best to the glory of God. Amen. 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 If you will, turn to the book of 2 Peter. Chapter 1. Starting at verse 1. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ have received a faith as precious as ours, grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these he has given us his very great and precious promises, 
so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness or virtue, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measures, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But if anyone does not have them, he is nearsighted and blind and has forgotten that he has been cleansed from his past sins. Therefore, my brothers, be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never fall. And if you will receive, and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Now, Lord, as we've come to the time of preaching, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, thou who art my strength and my redeemer, hide me behind the cross that men may see Jesus and Jesus alone. Fill me again with thy Holy Spirit. Let the preacher come, for he doesn't come. There can be no preaching. God, give us ears to hear and a heart to receive it and a will to do thy will. Lord, we thank you. We ask, Father God, that you bind up every hindrance to your word. Pull down every power and principality, every wicked spirit in high places, any demonic influence that's hovering around in the atmosphere. God, bind them in Jesus' name. We plead the blood this morning, Father God. Come now. Let your presence be strong in the midst of us. Tear down every wall that would separate us and that would keep us from fellowshipping with you. And we shall be careful. To give your name all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name who died for us. Amen. Uh, this morning I just want to teach a little bit. I'm not going to be before you too long. But an hour or so ought to get it. You know, church ought to be fun sometimes. We get so tight, so proper. We got a lot of cultural Christianity that means nothing in heaven. God wants us to enjoy him. Amen. To love him and enjoy him forever. God has a sense of humor. You don't believe it? Look in the mirror. <laughs> but this morning I want to talk about growing closer to God. As I said, I want to just teach a little bit. I'm not going to do a whole lot of hooping and hollering this morning. My wife said, we'll see. <laughs> growing closer. We sing that song close to thee all along this pilgrim journey. Savior, let me walk with thee. Who wouldn't want to grow closer to God? And yet, because of what we are so accustomed to, we have our comfort zones. And when you get outside of that comfort zone, some people say it just doesn't take all of that. But when sickness comes, when trouble comes, and in the time of trouble, men will turn to God. So sometimes trouble is good for us. 
as my brother here preached the other Sunday, embrace your pain. Don't waste it. Learn the lesson. But know this, that God is the joy and the strength of our lives. And we ought to grow closer to him. But I've got good news. You see, the thing is, is that God had moved. He said, draw near to God and he'll draw nearer to you. But he hadn't moved. He's in the same place he's always been. So what's the variable? Us. We're the ones that move. Sometimes we love him. Sometimes we're indifferent. And sometimes we want so much from him. And other times we don't pay him any attention. We have 168 hours in the week. And we barely want to give him an hour and a half on Sunday morning. <laughs> or you can go and say amen. <laughs> when every minute, every second is in his hands. Why would we not want to grow closer to him if the very breath in our nostrils belonged to him? We make time for everything that's soothing to our flesh. We make time for hockey games and lotteries and, uh, and a whole lot of stuff. We make time for ball games and TV programs and our favorite this and that, but God on a gradual basis, we got him allocated to a little box on Sunday mornings and, and, and we won't not too much then just two dollars worth of God please and put him in a bag I'll take him to go but we must be serious this life is not a game this experience that we have is one that he designed for us and we have to understand that we need him. Because we are going somewhere. The question is where? And we talk about being saved. Saved. Saved from what? Saved from the wrath of God. See, we spend a lot of time talking about God is good all the time. All the time God is good. And that sounds wonderful. But God is a God who's holy. And it's because of his holiness he has judgment. And one day we must all stand in front of him. In front of Jesus and give an account for how we lived our lives. And tell him how we spent our time. And spent our money. And how we use his resources. We must give an account. Fortunately, if you've been born again, it's for rewards and loss of rewards. Standing at the Bema seat. But if you happen to make the white throne judgment, that's not so good. We have an enemy. There are two kingdoms. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. And Jesus said that the devil is the prince of this world. But he is still limited in what he can do because God is still in control. But he allows certain things and he allows us free will. And so therefore, we have the free will to grow closer to him. That we might glorify him. Oftentimes, we just get wrapped up in the language. We got all this stuff on our license plates and on our bumper stickers and all. You know, people drive up behind you. That must be the most religious person in the world because you got all these scriptures just blasted all over the car. We got the language if you don't have the walk. We're kind of like the man who, whose car broke down in a small town and there was one mechanic and he couldn't get to his car right away and he needed transportation for something he was going to, a convention, and so he was knocking doors and he happened to knock the door of a preacher. The preacher said, well, I don't have a car I can loan you, but I, I ride a horse all the time because 
we go out on evangelistic programs and we are a circuit rider. I'll loan you my horse because this is my vacation week. And so he said, but now you have to understand that I'm a preacher. And so this horse responds to spiritual things. And when you want him to go, you say, hallelujah. <laughs> when you want him to stop, you say, amen. So he said, okay. So he got on the horse and he kicked him in the side and said, hallelujah. The horse went to galloping. He kicked him again. Hallelujah. The horse went to galloping. And off they went and on and on. And all of a sudden he realized they were coming to a cliff. And he couldn't think of what to say. And he said, we're going to die. And he's going toward the cliff. And all of a sudden, right at the very edge, he says, amen. And the horse says, stop. And he said, Hallelujah. <laughs> That's the way we are sometimes. We got the language. I'm too blessed to be stressed. And all of that stuff. But really what's behind your testimony. So therefore let's look here and see what Peter has to say. It says grace and peace be yours in abundance. Through the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. For his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. The wisdom writers in Psalm 1 tells us this. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Hmm? But we take advice from the wrong folk. Folk who don't know God, and we take an advice from them. Who standeth in the way of the sinner. Or sitteth in the seat of the scorner. Uh, there, you be careful who you're listening to. Your ear gates are very important. What you hear gets into your system. What you hear determines a lot of time what you believe. But the Bible says faith cometh by hearing. Hearing the word of God. Not the six o'clock news. But the word of God is important. For it is a lamp unto our feet. The longest chapter in the Bible is Psalm 119. And it's all about the word of God. And he said, I'll hide it in my heart. That I may not sin against thee. And so therefore it says that. But his delight is in the word of God. And in it does he meditate day and night. Now you might say, well, I don't have time to just be thinking about the word all day long. I have work to do. That's not what it means. It means to chew on. To chew on it. In other words, to consider it. You ought to have some scripture in your mind that helps you to deal with everyday life. Or when it gets dark and the dark nights of the soul you ought to be able to say that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When my enemies came upon me and the enemies will come upon you. He never promised us a rose garden. But he said, I'll be with you. And when God is with you, you don't have to worry about it. Because soon and very soon he'll bring you out. But we, these, these scriptures need to come up in our minds in the dark nights of the soul when death strikes, when sickness comes. When you hear siren, you don't know where your children are, your grandchildren are. But the peace of God that passeth all understanding ought to be keeping you in perfect peace. 
And when, when, when the psalmist said, don't, you know, the people who sit in the seat of the scornful, those are people who are telling stuff that has no faith in it. Murmurers, complainers. God hates complaining and murmuring. Because when you murmur and complain, you are accusing God of playing favorite. Why me all the time? Why not you? What is God doing? We murmur. We grumble. And whatsoever that is not of faith is sin. Our mouths mess us up. Hmm. Lord, help me, Holy Ghost. I haven't even got to my sermon yet. <laughs> Our mouths mess us up. Think about it. Think about the words that have been said. Jesus said that my words are strength. They are life. Words have life. How many children have heard a parent in frustration say, you're not going to be anything. You're just like you're no good so-and-so. Huh? Planting images. And some of us still hear those words and it still brings forth pain. And even though we have suppressed it by years and, and, and other circumstances, but it's right there with a door cracked open just waiting for somebody to remind you of what they said way back when you were in the first grade. It's called the bruises of Satan. And, and, and soon we're going to talk about the bruises of Satan. But God has called us to have victory in life. But we can't have it until our minds get adjusted. We can't have victory until we know his word. And see, here's the thing is that if you've been born again, you've got the victory, but you just don't know you got it. And the devil is banking on that. He's banking on the fact that you don't know that you've got power over him. He knows you're saved, but he doesn't want you to enjoy it. Nothing worse than a bunch of grumbling church folk who said, I love the Lord, but can't stand their neighbor. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. Can't speak. Got nothing to give anybody. Not even a cheerful good morning. Good morning. All right. <laughs> what kind of representative of the kingdom is this? And the world said, if that's what it means, I don't need that. I can get that anywhere. We ought to be the light of the world. The salt of the earth. Therefore, we're going to look at this word because in verse 2, he says, Grace and peace be unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. The word knowledge in the Greek was epinosis. It meant precise and correct knowledge. And it's used in the New Testament of the knowledge of things ethical and divine. Precise. Not, I think. We listen to a whole lot of myths where folks say, I know, because I read the Bible and so on and so on. We need to search it out and make sure that what we're hearing is correct. You don't have to take my word. Don't be lazy. Go home and open the Bible. Amen. Amen. But he's saying grace and peace be multiplied unto you. If you want more peace, you need more knowledge of him. Peter tells us that it will be multiplied. Multiplication is much better than addition. Second Corinthians tells us in 9 and 8 that God is able to make all grace abound toward you. He wants to give you a multiplication of your experiences in him. 
And you're probably saying, well, Dom, how can I make this happen? You see, I, I go to church, I pay my tithes, I do this, I do that. How does it happen? I'm glad you asked. This is the way he says in verse 3. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Huh? The epinosis. He has already given it to us. Too many people are trying to do kingdom work without knowledge. Wearing titles without knowledge. Peter is saying in order to multiply his grace and grow closer to him, you must have knowledge of him. How can you love somebody you don't know? You, you know, there's a show that comes on that's so idiotic. It's called Marriage at First Sight. What fool marries somebody and this is the first time he laid eyes on him? But it is a hit show. And so folks, Put the cart before the horse. You get married, then try to learn each other. But he says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He says, learn of me. Not learn about me, but come to know me in your personal studies. Don't wait to get to church to get you five cents worth of teaching and try to get ten dollars worth of living. It, 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 you see, here's the problem. If you go to the beach and you have a little thimble and you take a thimble full of the ocean water and bring it back, that's all you got. And we want to take a thimble and dip it into the knowledge of God and the service of God and the worship of God. But we want a whole bucket full of blessings. He doesn't want to just be our Savior. He wants to be our Lord. He wants to tell us how to live our lives. And I'm amazed at the arrogance that we have. You know, nobody tells me. Well, life will tell you. And it is a tough teacher. And then we want God. We want the preacher to come. We want the deacon board to come. We want everybody to come. Anybody know the prayer of faith? Come. Well, where have you been? And so therefore, he's calling us into service. He's calling us into fellowship, into relationship, because the difference between Christianity and all other religions is relationship. You can't have a relationship with a dead idol. Yet we're the most idolatrous nation on earth. We'll put football before Jesus. We put a lot of things before the Lord. How do we spend our time? We need to be in his word. Because he has done so much for us. But the problem is we don't know that we have it. And oftentimes we go looking in the wrong places for it. Oprah can't fix your life. Ianna can't fix your life. When your watch is broken, you don't take it to a mechanic. Hmm. And yet, the grace and power that we need only comes from God. Husband and wives, you're not each other's God. They're not responsible. You're not responsible for each other's joy and happiness. You can provide some good situations. But it's our, the battle is in the mind. Our relationship with God is what matters. And when our relationship with him gets right, our relationship with others get right. Amen. So when we come into his house, we are united by commonality, the blood of Jesus. 
In the physical, when the sperm infuses the egg, life begins. It is an undeveloped life, but everything that the baby needs is there in conception. God put the blueprint in for the development of that child at that very moment. It's called DNA. You don't have to go looking for a foot or adding an eye because it's already there in undeveloped stages. It's like spaghetti sauce, Prego. You want onions? It's in the sauce. You want peppers? It's already there. You want mushrooms? It's already there. Everything pertaining to it is already there. And everything we need in life, we already have. So why can't I find it? Because you're looking in the wrong places. To grow closer to God isn't about workshops or choir universes. It's about his divine power. Let me say it again. You can give all the workshops you want, but unless God is in it, 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 it doesn't give you much. You can have great programs in the church, but if it's not in Jesus, it's just a great program church. I heard one person say we're talking about a new pastor said, you know, can we use a young man? Or is it depends on his program? Well, his programs don't have much to do with the divine power. The divine power helps to create the programs. We got it the cart before the horse. When you have Jesus, he'll show us what he wants us to do. But we got cultural religion, it's planned. Plan A, we got uh, the music here, we got the prayer there, we've got the scripture there. If anything gets out of place, we wonder what in the world is going on. I, I forgot to do uh, the covenant the first Sunday. And, and some of y'all got really upset. He forgot the covenant. Well, we're going to do the covenant because I'm going to preach the covenant. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just empty ritual. You just used to doing it. Don't mean nothing to you because the way you treat one another. I know you ain't read the covenant. <laughs> Preach, David. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is saying to us this morning that I have given you everything you need. When you buy a car, it's got certain features on there. And some things you have to add on to make it the top of the line. But God said, I've given you a top of the line salvation. But you got to read the manual. We get info from the wrong sources. So how does it work? Verse 4 tells us, whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises. That by these you might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. Partakers. Listen, this is where it's getting real now. I can tell you right now, this is a series. We, we won't get through this today. Our nature is our essence, our core being, who we are. We understand it in the animal kingdom. That no matter how much you feed that rascal, he'll still bite you. Like the snake that was frozen on the road and the man picked him up and put him in his pocket to save him and it got warm. He bit the man. The man said, I saved your life. Why would you bite me? He said, you knew I was a snake when you put me in your pocket. <laughs> our nature, our essence, our core, who we are. We do things well that we understand because it's in our nature. We do things bad because it's in our nature. Paul said it this way, when I would do good, evil is present. We are made up of three parts. We have a body, 
which interacts with nature, with our environment. We have a spirit that is for God consciousness. And we have a soul, which is our minds, our will, our emotions. And it is for self-consciousness. The divine nature interacts with our spirit. He infuses himself into us through our spirit. The spirit is dead. Dead man walking. Unless we are born again. When we repent of our sins, when we ask Jesus to be our savior, the spirit of God comes into us inhabits our human spirit and we become alive to God. Until that time we messed up. We were what we call the natural man. When we were on Bible study last week I lost my internet and it said no signal. That's what it is for folks who sit in the church every Sunday morning but haven't been born again. There's no signal. So they're living by the natural inclinations of man. But when he infuses us, it's like when you got a cup of coffee and you put some cream in it and you stir it and it mixes. That's what he's doing. He's mixing with our spirit. And the spirit brings with him, I said with him, not it, because it's God. He brings with him Love, peace, joy, holiness, blamelessness, redemption, all of the things we need. And he tells us right here, he says his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. We can participate. So when you got a whole lot of hell going on in the church, And folks is sniping one another, backbiting one another. Hmm? You know, they need to go in home picking up the phone. Don't, don't call me. All I'm going to do is invite you to let's have prayer. But a whole lot of mess goes on in churches. And I'm not just talking about churches out there, I'm talking about in here. Personality conflicts, big cheeses, big eyes, little U's. Huh? Can't say amen? amen. <laughs> Can't work together. Always something going on. And, and God has a list of things he doesn't like. And on the bottom of that list it says, He who causes division among the brothers. But when we are infused by his love, when we are infused by his holiness and blamelessness, and when we are infused by his redemption and he has paid the ransom for our soul, he expects some return for his investment and he invests in us day and night. And then the spirit gets together with the soul. We're going to talk about the soul next week because that's going to take a whole lot of work. But he tries to take control of the soul and then the soul tells the body what to do so when the body wants to do some bad stuff the soul and the spirit say we don't do that anymore and the body said what <laughs> but I feel it we don't walk by feeling we walk by faith I've been born again and so therefore what happens we got new affections Things that really appeal to us. The world grows dim 
in the face of Jesus Christ. I used to love R&B. I loved some Jackie Wilson. Later on, some Barry White. I love the way Barry said, Broadway. <laughs> but now I begin to realize when I listen to the lyrics, I hear them with a different ear. Because it's not really about love, because love is pure. It's about seduction. Huh? And, and, and music is under the auspices of the devil because he brought the praise to God. And when God kicked him out, he landed in the choir. I mean, he landed in the earth. And he has used his tomb to drag us through our, our fleshly desires into evilness. And it has gotten worse and worse and worse. And we're still feeding at the devil's table. But he says, if we have the knowledge of him. Know who you are in Christ Jesus. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. And this life I live is by the grace of God because he gave his life for me. Not only that, he said, I'm justified by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and therefore I got peace with God and I got access into his grace and if you're going to have access you've got to have the right nature the divine nature so that you can be blessed didn't say you wouldn't have trouble he said I'll never leave you I'll never forsake you and so let's walk together let's love one another Let's cooperate with one another. And ask yourself, what can I do in my church to glorify my God who hung on Calvary and died that I might have eternal life? Because as cute as you are, you still going to die. And then the judgment. And so therefore, when I stand before him, all I'm going to say is, give me the blood. I just need the blood. Because the blood never loses its power. Well, that's enough for this pretty Sunday morning. But we'll take this up next week when we talk about the spirit and the soul and the body. Go in and read this word. In Ephesians, the first chapter, that's where we are in Bible study. And we are talking about these things that God has given us. You will be blessed. You will be blessed. You see, our joy shouldn't come from hooping and hollering. It comes from a changed mind. A changed disposition. A changed heart. Because it got nothing to do with who sits next to you. God wants to get you out of your comfort zone. And if you don't think you've got a comfort zone, you let somebody ask you to sit where you don't usually sit. <laughs> I mean, that's just a minute instance. <laughs> and oh, you bought the seat. <laughs> I'm just messing with you now. <laughs> May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And give you peace that passes all understanding. Let us stand. The doors of the church are open. Perhaps this morning there's someone who's never given his or her life to the Lord. And you need to come. Don't, don't be deluded by the fact that you've joined the church. 
I was in the church a whole lot of years before I got saved. Tell the truth and shame the devil. Amen. What you come? Jesus, all of my tribe. Will there be one? And if you need a church home, won't you come? In my distress, he kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. Who are you going to tell? I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. I cannot. Yes, 
Yes, Lord. Let us pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Our souls say yes to your will. Yes to your way. Come into our hearts. Let thy kingdom come. Let thy will be done in us as it is in heaven. Bless us as a church, a congregation, a fellowship, a colonia. Lord, bless us to be a blessing to each other and to those outside. To be a blessing to those who even live in our homes and bless us, Father God, as we go out and bless us as we come in. We pray for the sick and the shut in this morning, oh God. We lift up Tyler today, Father, and ask that you touch him in a special way. We lift up Joe Carter, Father, and we ask that you bless him and touch him at the point of his need. We pray for those whose names are on our sick list, and we pray for those who have lost loved ones. We pray for the Beckwith family and the Dunn family. We pray for all who are under the sound of my voice, who are missing loved ones. God, be with them. Fill them with your love. Lift up their hearts. Put a song on their lips. Spread your love through them with the Holy Ghost. And Lord, we will give you the praise and honor and the glory. Teach us how to love one another. Teach us how to encourage one another. Teach us how to be a blessing to the kingdom. Teach us how to forgive as you have forgiven us. And when we go from this place, may we be able to declare that mine eyes have seen the glory of the Lord. But it was not in the preacher, it was not in the musicians, but it was in Jesus who died that I might have life more abundantly. The God candle of life. Bind every hindrance in our lives, every spirit of infirmity that works in and against our bodies. Lord, we pray for healing. For somebody right now needs a touch from you. Somebody's back is hurting. Somebody's shoulder is hurting. Somebody's blood pressure is out of control. Somebody's diabetes is out of control. Somebody's mind needs fixing. Somebody is depressed, but God, you are able to do more than we could ever ask or think. Come, Lord Jesus, be mighty in the midst and then put a testimony on our lips that we might declare to a dark world that Jesus is the light of the world. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm going to ask that you be seated for a moment. I'm going to ask if John would just bless us. I want you to meditate on the goodness of the Lord before
Thank you.